Hi, this is Charlie Setterfield. Hey, I want to cover um, an issue that is tricky for a lot of people in Revit, and that is this idea of a view range. And so um, what I'm going to do is open up a um, basic project. So just uh, click the purple R, get that drop down, hover over New, and slide over to Project. Go ahead and click once on Project. Then I'm going to change this template so that it is a commercial template. So click once on commercial and click on open. And now I'm back to my new project dialog box. And just click OK. And then Revit chugs along for a minute and now I've got a blank project. And so what I want to do here is show you where the view range settings are for a couple of different kinds of views and explain some of the logic behind why it is the way it is. So. If I'm just in my level one plan here, I can see that in my project browser. I know that I'm on my level one plan because it's the one that's in bold. And so <clears throat> in my properties for that view, uh, if I slide down all the way to the bottom there and click on the edit button next to view range, it opens that view range dialog box for me. <clears throat> and I've got four settings in there. I've got the associated level, uh, which is level one. Um, and that's the same for all of these. And then I've got an offset from that level of uh, various dimensions. So the top of my range is at uh, 7 foot 6. My cutting plane is at 4 feet. The bottom of my view is at 0 and my view depth is at 0. And we'll look at each one of those and make sure that we're okay with what's going on there. So <clears throat> the example that I'd like to use is to go ahead and place a couple of cabinets into the model here and use those as my items. So I'm going to just click OK. Uh, so we've seen what the standards are. So now I need to go and add some some cabinetry to this project because I'm in the um, commercial uh, template. It doesn't have much in the way of casework. So actually I'm going to go and grab some kitchen cabinets to put in. Uh, so click on component, place component, I know that I don't have any kitchen cabinets because I place, I, um, I click this drop down and I can look at all of the components that are loaded and uh, kitchen cabinets are not among them. So I need to click on load family. That takes me to my imperial library and I'm looking for uh, kitchen cabinets which are part of casework. So I select my casework folder and click open and I'm looking for kitchen and click open and so now I've got a variety of cabinets that I can load into my project I'm gonna load in uh, just kind of at random this uh, base cabinet four drawers and put that one in and I'm gonna go ahead and place that on my model here or in my model um, and that's all well and good, but let me go and try to place an upper cabinet or a wall cabinet. Well, I didn't load any of those, so I need to hit load family again. Back to casework, back to kitchen, and Revit classifies these as upper. They don't call them wall cabinets, they call them upper. So upper cabinet, um, uh, I don't want that one, that one's too complicated. Oh. There we go, that one's fine. Double door, upper cabinet, no problem. Click open. Now, I'm trying to put that into my model and it's not letting me. I'm getting that denied symbol there. Well, well, that's because an upper cabinet or a wall cabinet is a wall hosted element. I don't have a wall to put it on, so I can't magically hang this thing in space. And Revit knows that. When the model was, when the, the family was created, it was created as a wall hosted element and so I need a wall so let's bounce back to our home tab here I'm gonna grab a wall and just place that in my model um, generic 8 inch is fine just place that across oops let's draw it straight pick that back out wall ching. now I'm gonna bring this uh, base cabinet over in line with the wall just because that's the way it's supposed to be. So modify tab, click on align. I want to change that from wall center line to wall face. 
and I'm going to align from there to there. And so now I've got that cabinet in line with that wall. Now I can go back to my home tab and place a component in <clears throat> my upper cabinet. Now I'm able to do that uh, because now I have a wall. So I go ahead and place it on my wall. Let me go ahead and open the south elevation here so that we can just see what's going on. And I zoom in a little bit. And there you can see my base cabinet. I click on it. My property has changed to that base cabinet. Click on my wall cabinet. And there it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drag these levels a little bit closer to my wall here. So just click in the um, open button there and drag those closer. So let's put in some lines that represent um, <clears throat> the elevations that we saw there in the view range. First of all, when I'm looking at the level one plan, that associated level that they had was this level one that you see right there. And it's set at zero. So the next one that we saw was a uh, top of range which was set at uh, 7 feet 6. So I'm going to put a level in here at 7 feet 6. So I'm just going to draw the, actually I'll use the pick lines tool. I'm going to offset that 7 feet 6. I'm going to uncheck this where it says make plan view. I don't really want to plan of this. I'm just using this as an organizer. So make plan view. I'm unchecking that. And uh, oops, let me unlock that one. And then I'm going to drag that guy out by itself. I'm going to change the name of that to top of view range. So that's my 7 foot 6 number. Let me do another one of those <clears throat> where I place that. Now I'm going to place this next one at 4 feet. Again, unlock that, drag that one out here someplace, and change that level to cutting plane. Okay, so now if I uh, tile my windows here, go back into this plan view, there's my cabinet, there's my base. So if I go back into that plan view and um, now in my properties dialog box, slide all the way down and click on the view range edit button. Now my view range, I can see that's my four foot line, and that's that guy right there, and my seven foot six, and that's that guy right there. So now I've put in a couple of lines that represent these, just so that I can visualize what's going on. I'm going to click OK. So <clears throat> now back to my plan view here. I want to place something that's outside of my view range. Actually, I want to do it a couple of times. The first thing that I'm going to do is to uh, place a cabinet that's above my 7 foot 6 so that you can see what happens when you place something outside of the view range. So back into my plan view component and um, notice that it's got an elevation here of this upper wall cabinet of 4 foot 6. Um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one just so that I have a high one to use. So edit type, and I make my duplicate here by just clicking on that button. I'm going to call this one 42 inch high placement cabinet. So I click on OK there. I click on OK there. And now I'm going to place this thing on my wall. But now I can change. I can change the uh, elevation of it here. I'm going to make that 8 feet. Click Apply. So, what just happened, I now have my high cabinet there placed above my top of view range. So, when I go back to my plan view, I don't see that cabinet, right? I'm seeing only the low cabinet. Tile my windows. Um, I'm seeing only the low cabinet there, it's that one, I'm not seeing the high one. So um, that's an illustration of the view range top being at 7 foot 6. If I all of a sudden change that to 
um, 10 and click apply, then that cabinet pops back in. I'm going to take that back out. 7 foot 6, apply. Okay. So now I'm back to my out of the box settings for that view range. So now I want to draw something or create something that's outside of my view range, uh, but this time I want to be below it. So I'm going to bounce over to a site plan. So just double click on site plan in your project browser. And uh, there's that wall that I created. I'm going to just create a site and I'm going to put that site at uh, negative one inch. And so um, I, I do that on my masking and site tab up here at the top. Click on topo surface. Um, I'm going to set my elevation here. Actually, I've already got it set to negative one inch. I click to create my site, and I've got this whole tiny chunk. And I say OK. And now I go back over to my level one plan, and I can't see that site because it's below my um, bottom of view range. So let's go and change that. So over my properties dialog for my floor plan, I drag that all the way down to the bottom, click the edit button next to view range, and there I see that it's set at zero. If I uh, change that offset um, to a negative number, I could have that appear. Or what I tend to do more is to use this view depth, and right now it's set at zero. I'm going to change that to unlimited and then click apply and see what happens there is that my site is now in my view because now I'm seeing basically um, to infinity um, as I'm looking down. So why is this important? Well uh, imagine that you're doing a floor plan of an office building and you've got sidewalks outside. Um, sometimes you might want to see how those sidewalks lead up to the door and sometimes in other views you don't want to see them. So it's nice to be able to control that that depth um, or maybe landscaping or whatever, you know. So you might have instances where uh, you want those things to show up um, and you want that to be controlled by the view depth rather than by visibility graphics overrides. So actually I'm going to click cancel and get back out of that. So the other thing that you should be aware of is that view depths change by plan type. And so we've been looking at um, floor plan view depths. I'm going to change over to a roof plan here. And I'm going to open view range on that roof plan. And you'll notice that I've got much different numbers there. So my top is set to 20 and my cutting plane is set to 20 and then my bottom and my view depth are both set to zero. So why would that be? Well, imagine that you could have a roof that's got some slope to it. right? So I've got uh, a pitched roof. I don't want to be cutting through the roof. I want to be above it. So it's easier if I just kind of show you what's going on here. So I'm going to click uh, OK just to get back out of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place a little roof on my project here. We'll pretend it's going to work. So. Uh, roof by footprint, and then I'm just going to do a uh, rectangle here, grab that corner, and actually I'll come down here. Um, I need to put some slope to this thing, so I'm going to make that one define slope, that one define slope. Um, it's set to come in at the roof plane level. Okay, so I think I'm good for my example here. I'm going to end up with a little gable roof, so I'm going to click the finish button. Attach the wall, sure. And then let's look at this in 3D just to see what I did. So now I've got this um, kind of odd little thing, uh, but I've got a roof. And so if I go back to my uh, south elevation, that roof, roof is that guy right there. We can imagine that you know, if I had a cutting plane that was down in here someplace, it would be cutting through that roof and it would look kind of odd. So let's see if we can make that happen. I'm going to go ahead and put in one more level while I'm here and make that be the 20 feet above my roof level. So use the pick line, an offset of 20 from roof, rename that from level 4 to roof top of view and cut, because 
because they're both the same. Uh, sure. I forgot to turn that off. I'm going to unlock that and bring that one out with these guys, just so that I can keep track of that. Okay, so now that's where my uh, cutting plane is. And um, imagine that I've got this roof and my cutting plane was down here cutting through the roof. So let me do a little measurement here to see what I can get away with. So four feet. So if, let's say, let's go back to that roof plan. And let's say for whatever reason, instead of having my cutting plane be at 20 feet, I'm going to edit that and put it down at 2 feet. So cutting plane 20, make that 2, and click apply and watch what happens. So now what I've done is now I'm slicing through that roof. So now instead of being a plan view, it's kind of like a an odd section view kind of thing going on. So that's probably not what we want. Um, and so I want to get back out of that. So, th But anyway, that's what happens. Uh, with different views. Now, where were these things born? How, how does it know that a roof view is different than a plan view? Well, that comes from the view templates. And so if I uh, hover over where it says roof in my project browser, that view, and I look at apply view template, one of the things that's in there for an architectural roof plan, if I slide down here, is that view range. So if I click that edit, edit button, I get that exact same dialog box. So what's going on here is that I've got these templates available. So architectural plan, roof plan, area electrical, etc. I've got those already set up as uh, view templates. And so if you've got an office standard that has something else going on, you can certainly go in and change it. We'll do a whole video on view templates by themselves, but I wanted you to know where the, the um, view range is created on a template by template basis. I'm going to click OK and get out of there. And um, so that's the idea of view range. If I go and look at my level one, oops, my level one um, view template, architectural plan, view range, there's that four foot, seven foot six, and zero uh, that I would expect to see there. So that's the idea of view range. Hope that helps.